Despite common misconception, bird watching is no doubt an exciting pastime. For many, it's a lifelong passion. Unlike some other hobbies, birding requires tremendous patience, as any beginner would likely admit, and keen observation. But, I'd argue, it is one of the most rewarding experiences. I see bird watching as an opportunity to commune with nature. To me, it's humbling to acknowledge I share a planet with such magnificent creatures, and in this way, belong to something greater. But you don't have to go to the Wyoming woodlands to chance a Townsend solitaire. Depending on where you live, you can start bird watching from the comfort of your own backyard. Texas is native to several species. The American Robin, Blue Jay, Cedar Waxwing, House Finch, Red-tailed Hawk, Northern Cardinal, among many others. They're all commonly spotted in residential areas. I like a lot of large wading birds, such as the Great Egret and the Great Blue Heron. To the untrained eye, it's easy to get the two confused, so allow me to provide a brief description of them. Egrets and herons belong to the same family, the Ardea die. Texas has over 10 species of heron, which includes the American bittern, black crowned night heron, cattle egret, great blue heron, great egret, snowy egret. While their migratory patterns vary with each species, they tend to nest close together in a phenomenon known as a rookery. Herons and egrets feed on fish, insects, and other small mammals, like mice. Since we established what they have in common, let's focus on a few key differences. For this example, I'll compare the great blue heron to the great egret, which isn't to be confused with the great white heron. I'll try to avoid an exhaustive list. First, the great blue heron has long gangly legs, a sinuous neck, and yellow spear-like bill. It hunts with its neck erect. In flight, the great blue heron folds its neck in an S-shape. Notice how the heron rests its head on its shoulders whenever it roosts. The great blue heron has broad shoulders and a wide wingspan. It stands at four feet tall. You can identify the great blue heron by its white crown, gray-blue back, white breast, and distinctive streaks above its eyes. Its plume gives it a shaggy appearance. Both sexes have similar coloration. The great blue heron is known for being a quiet, solitary bird, but if excited, you can hear it let out a harsh, deep croak. A disturbance can cause it to squawk too. Herons are most vocal on breeding grounds. Come spring, the great blue heron will breed in colonies called heronies. As mentioned, the great egret is a type of heron. In fact, the great egret has a similar build to the great blue heron. Additionally, the great egret has a long curved neck, much like its larger counterpart. However, upon close inspection, it's clear the great egret is different in appearance. You can distinguish an egret from an heron thanks to its pristine white plume. It has a slender body and slim shoulders. When in flight, the great egret tucks its neck in a nest shape. But when it wades through the water, if something catches its interest, the great egret will extend its neck upright like a crook. From a distance, its stocky black legs resemble reeds. It stands at just over three feet in height. The great egret hunts with its dagger-like bill, which it uses as a spear, striking its prey in one quick motion. With regards to its voice, the egret makes a low, hoarse croak. They are especially vocal during breeding season as well. 
In both cases, males are the first to arrive at the breeding grounds. When it comes to the great egret, males will build a nest, gathering sticks and twigs before it pairs with a mate. It usually finishes with the arrival of a female. As for the great blue heron, once a male arrives at a nest site, it will court passing females. Males will collect pine needles, dry grass, and small twigs, usually found around the nest site. Females will in turn weave a platform, constructing a nest. Both the great blue heron and the great egret are seasonally monogamous, meaning they pair with one partner each breeding season. They will sometimes nest close together in breeding colonies. Colonies can consist of numerous individual nests. Now, at this point, you might ask, what does this have to do with anything? To which I say, it's important to not only recognize these birds, but understand how we can impact them with human activities like development. These birds have nested over at the Brackenridge Park for the past two decades. Due to human activity, forcing many to migrate elsewhere, a larger number of them have relocated to the Brackenridge Park, roosting in the trees. But because of the overwhelming bird population, their feces has become a problem, as it causes algae to bloom in the San Antonio River, negatively affecting the water quality and threatening biodiversity. In response, the city has taken several measures to deter these birds from roosting there. As one writer at Express News explains, the city is, quote, removing all nests, clearing underbrush, and opening the tree canopy by removing dead wood. It also is hiring workers to stress the birds with unpleasant noises and lights, such as pyrotechnics and clappers. Their toolkit also includes effigies, balloons, and drones. To further complicate the situation, a number of these birds, such as the cattle egret, are federally protected under the Migratory Bird Treaty Act, in addition to Chapter 64 of Texas Parks and Wildlife Code, which Vivian Lopez, a contributor from Now Cast SA, writes, prevent the birds from being killed, possessed, commercialized, or distributed at breeding grounds. Naturally, the city's dispersal efforts sparked outrage among environmental activists especially as the city of San Antonio campaigned for the removal of 77 native trees and actions since delayed. It's a multifaceted issue with no clear solution. It's important to acknowledge these birds play an essential role in the ecosystem. Now it's easy to forget how human activity can negatively impact the environment, whether it be overfishing, habitat loss, poaching, or more broadly climate change with the emission of greenhouse gases and deforestation. Even on a local scale, our behavior can have a tremendous impact. With a continual and concerted effort, we can initiate positive change around the community. The problem is, most people are unaware. Again, it's a complicated issue. So for now, we will have to wait and see what happens. We can debate the ethics of the situation for hours. But I'd like to leave you on this note. What a shame it'd be that if because of our behavior, these birds one day go extinct, constantly pushed from one place to the next, unable to adapt to the rapid changes.
Thank you.